the larva x larva x why the larva x it reminds me of that movie with jeff goldblum the fly and as if this was once a nice clean <sighs> fpv quadcopter that they probably purchased in order to reverse engineer and clone and that it was still in sort of a larval state when they just decided to launch it all i've done is say to the world let's go move catch me if you can i i almost feel like that really encapsulates happy model quite well they uh their products are in a larval state and instead of fully baking them fully realizing them fully growing them to where they would be reliable they're just like send it but this one's baked a little bit more than a lot of the other happy model releases is this the one guys <laughs> John here guys, and today we're talking about the Happy Model Larva X. As much as we all harp on Happy Model. One thing that it consistently gets right is the flight experience. Virtually everything that they put out flies exceptionally well. Uh, and that's what makes them such a polarizing and uh really debatable on whether they are the worst thing in fpv in years because they are enticing people to buy their models because they are a very inexpensive uh but there's a reason why people buy it and take that gamble uh and it's because if you do get a good one it can last a good while and then you're on for some good cheap fun because their models are also consistently very aggressively and low priced. Um, so this is the latest offering by them, the Larva X. And I don't know for sure because I haven't put the proper amount of packs for some really thorough testing on this, but in the first eight or nine packs or so that I've flown this, I think they may be stepping it up a little bit. This frame is a little bit thicker than the Mobula 7. It's clearly sort of inspired by the Racer X twig, uh, but it's not a direct copy. It um, is taking a really interesting formula at using like these two and a half inch size props versus like a 65 millimeter prop like this Ditone Cube. And you can see that those props are really close. I guess you probably, I wonder if you could run these on there, but they've made a very interesting selection of components here. Um, and it gives her a very interesting flight experience. So one notable thing is this canopy isn't great, but it's definitely a step up than the cell fly. This is an actual injected molded, it's very thin. I'm not sure how big of a hit it'll take, but it should provide some protection for your camera. Uh, and they are using the Run Cam Nano 2 this time, so they've stepped that up. They've, stopped, they've abandoned using those garbage cameras like they have in the past on some of those models. And uh, they are also using this Diamond uh, DVR VTX thing in here. So you do have onboard DVR. Uh, with this model, which is a welcome addition. That's something that a lot of the other things in this class do not have. The motors are the Happy Model 1103 7000 KV. Now that's a very interesting uh, KV for something of this size. Normally uh, for this size, my recommendation is that you bump the KV all the way up and you go 2S, uh, something more like the cube again. Uh, something closer to 10,000 kV on 2S would be perfect. Keep the weight down because this isn't going to be particularly robust in this configuration, even though that they have uh, thickened up the frame a bit. Uh, so at 7,000 kV, you're definitely going to want to run a 3S on this. So that puts a lot of these other components at risk. Now, this is the latest edition of the Crazy B board and... Uh, how robust is it? Time will tell. It's too new, guys, to really know if this board is safe. I did go onto the Happy Model Users Group uh, and put up a poll to ask 
how many people have burnt up their same cell flies or not cell flies, the larva eggs? Not many people. Um, so at this point, it looks like is Happy Model finally figuring it out? Are they finally figuring out how to put a reliable, at least in FPV terms, product out to the market uh, that still has their flight feel? Now, let's talk about that. How do they do in terms of the thing that they've always done the best, which is Happy Model's exceptional flight feel? Uh, man, this one is such a different thing. Again, this size and weight, preferable to us. Uh, but when you put 3S on it, a few things change. It feels a little bit heavy. Uh, and that's not necessarily a bad thing for these micros. It's not overly heavy, like uh, a giant freestyle quad, but it feels a little bit heavy. And sometimes that extra weight of that you know, 3S battery in this case will allow, it feels locked in. It feels like a racing quad. Uh, if you've ever flown a racing quad as opposed to a freestyle quad, um, you know, it's almost like you, you turn your rates down a little bit lower. You want your turns to be precise. And I feel like that's kind of how this feels. I don't want to say it necessarily feels sluggish. I'll say that it feels locked in. Now, in a punch, 3S with these 2.5-inch props versus 2S on this, uh, I would guess the top speed of this is probably a little bit Higher. I really wish I had speed gun to test the spot, top speed of this, but uh, this does seem to have a little bit more punch, and it's likely due to that um, extra voltage that you're getting from that three cell battery. Uh, in most instances, would I pick this as my number one flyer? Probably not, guys, but here's the thing a lot of times when you want to buy your micro, you're buying your first or you're buying your first micro because you want to fly five inch and you want to kind of dedicate your most of your funds towards that you want to dedicate it to developing your freestyle to developing your racing you just want to have one of these to be able to fly in a pinch in a parking lot in front of your house um at your grandma's wherever you're going and you don't have enough space or time to bust out the five inch and for that purpose i would have to say it's perfectly fine comes with some other extras in the box an extra canopy which uh Good on Happy Model. This is the second time or third time they've done that. Comes with your little standard screwdriver, some extra little screws and hardware, and a set of these. I think these are the HQ two and a half inch uh, props. Uh, I went ahead and flew it on these Emax A vans. I absolutely loved the Emax A van prop on the uh, Baby Hawk R four inch. So I wanted to see what the two and a half inch was all about. I'll probably try these out too. A lot of people are saying they like the HQ a little bit better. Uh, man, golly, is two and a half inch making a comeback? My favorite recipe for two and a half inch props of this size, of this size, is to add a little bit of extra weight by increasing your motor size to about 1106, uh, reducing the KB even further down to about 4,500 to 5,000, and then run it on 4S. Uh, but at that point, you have a very much different craft that's similar to like the massive droners that I built on this channel. It's going to be extremely faster, uh, but it's also going to gain you like at least 70 to 80 grams. So then you're talking about something that's not as uh, portable where you can just take it anywhere and not worry about crashing into things. I don't think this frame is going to hold up as much as like the cube or the twig. It does have some flex there, so I think it's going to crack in some of these small little areas, but it does seem more sturdy than the Sailfly. These motors, they're just like recycling these things on so many models. This is like the same motor that they had on the UR85HD that they rebranded for those guys. The same model, I believe, on the Happy Model Mobula HD. It's like, guys, give us a new motor. Like, is this really 1103? It's... I mean, I guess it is, but I just don't feel like it has the same amount of power as other 1103s in this class that I've flown. But here's the thing. They make up for some of that lack in power by adding 3S extra voltage. Then you get that power back. But what I suspect may be happening is that you are potentially reducing the longevity of these um, components by doing that. I don't know that for sure. I'm just basing that on Happy Model's track record 
and that they're kind of deviating from what I feel is the, the ideal recipe for this. But it flies quite nice. It hasn't burned up yet. I do note on this new version of the Crazy Bee that's supposed to be more robust, supposed to be able to hire higher amounts of power. They did start to omit the capacitor that they used to put on the pigtail. I don't really like that. If this was gonna be my main flyer, I think I would go ahead and add a capacitor back in just for some added voltage protection. I did seem to note that the models that I was running a capacitor on um, seemed to last a bit longer for me personally. Uh, it's just a negligible, almost negligible amount of weight and effort in order to add a little bit of protection. Um, whether or not the protection is real, I'm not really sure. What do you guys think in the comments? Um, the video transmitter is, you know, just, it's okay. You know, it's, it's fine. Uh, the DVR is a nice feature. That's finally something that Happy Model's doing that nobody else really is in this class yet. Uh, and I think that if you can pick these up for 85 to 95 bucks, even as much as 105, depending on what receiver option you get, it's a good value. Now I got the, the, uh, the built-in receiver, which is you know known for having terrible range. I flew it out, I don't know, maybe a, a hundred yards, uh, which is probably about the max, and it seemed to do okay. If sometimes on these you'll get to like 50 yards, and it'll start getting that um, those dropouts and those fail-safe micro fail-safes where you kind of lose control for an instant. Uh, so this one does seem slightly improved, but if you really want to go um, a little bit of a normal range, you know, spring for the other options on there. They do have the option for an RSXR, um, but I just didn't feel like I needed that because I don't really fly these very far. So is this an indication that Happy Model is finally turning things around? Are they finally becoming um, someone that always knew how to give you the flight feel that you wanted, but just couldn't quite get the recipe for the components? Were they jumping the gun? Were they too excited to get to market? Were they too excited to make those sales at the expense of the customer? But they're finally um, getting that process down a little bit better and able to deliver you something that is at least reliable enough for our purposes. Now, let's talk about failure rates before we close for a second. The failure rates on Happy Model products are the issue. And so a lot of people will say, hey, I've had Mobula 7 and whatever else, Happy Model models um, for months and they all work fine so you don't know what you're talking about that's not how failure rates work guys failure rates work by let's say you release a hundred models out into let's say a thousand a thousand models out into the market uh, some of those are going to work perfectly fine some of those are going to die at your first plugin some of those are going to die in the first 10 plugins or so 10 packs and to me, a failure is something that does die in that first 10 packs. So whether it's flights or just plugins. And um, for a normal industry, like say your cell phone, the failure rates have to be extremely low, like, like a hundredth of a percent, right? So for FPV, we're kind of, it's a smaller industry. A lot of these things are developed under not the highest levels of quality control. So the higher... Um, echelons of what we consider great failure rates for our industry may be like a 1% ish um, and then I would estimate based on people posting uh, in the Facebook groups and the RC groups on my YouTube comments uh, on Instagram everywhere else it's hard to compile this data so we don't really accurately know but you could easily tell that their failure rates were much higher now, whether it's 10%, whether it's 30%, um, it's an astronomically higher failure rate than what is acceptable to consumers. But chances are you could be in that 70% group and still get plenty of good ones. Um, now, those of us that are unfortunate enough to be in the other group could have gotten multiple bad ones. So what people don't understand is like, yes, you may have gotten some good ones, if you are still flying after 10 packs, chances are you got a good one and you have nothing to worry about. But that's not acceptable to us. We need a higher standard. So hopefully this is it. Hopefully this is Happy Model finally getting the reliability recipe right. I don't think this is the perfect flight recipe, but it does fly very well. Um, I think I like this better than the Sailfly. Um, so if you have the opportunity to buy one of these versus that, and this is the max budget that you can spend, 
um, go ahead, pull the trigger, spend an extra 15, 20 bucks, it's worth it. Uh, the looks are good. Of course, their looks are generally okay because they just kind of copy what looks good and tweak it slightly. I do like that they have done their own sort of flavor of motor protection. It's like this three-pointed thing. I actually think that will protect uh, your motor decently. There's some thin points in there that you may have some carbon cracks if in a hard enough crash, but these things are light enough to where that's probably not something huge to worry about. So, what do you think, guys? Is this finally, is this finally the one? <laughs>